Okay, this video is going to be a lot different than anything we've done in the past um, with regard to data recovery. A, because it's not going to include data recovery, and B, I'm really, really pissed off right now. This is a 5 terabyte Seagate hard drive. It's an ST5000DM000. This drive here should be recoverable. Um, it had a bad set of heads in it. The, we had another set of heads that were installed in it. They weren't quite working out. Put another set in. They seem to be responding a lot better. Um, the problem is there's an area of this drive that we need to gain access to uh, that we are currently locked out of. Um, the area that we need to get into is a part of the system area and what it does is it allows us to change some of the settings with how the drive um, some of the operations that take place when the drive is calibrating and um, getting to the point where it's accessible. Uh, you can disable some of those elements so that if it's getting any errors or anything like that it's essentially just bypassing them. What Seagate has done on this drive and they've done it on others as well um, two terabytes, three terabytes um, also have the same issue uh, and four terabytes but I believe I believe on the four terabytes there's actually been a workaround and I know there's been one on the uh, two and three terabytes. On the five terabytes there is no workaround on that at this point so essentially Seagate has held this customer's data hostage in a way. I mean that's the only way to put it. We are locked out from being able to do anything that we that, that we need to do, some of the things that we need to do in order to gain access to the data that's stored on here um, because Seagate has put this uh, lockout in place. I'm not saying that it won't ever be overcome because um, we have people working on it and also at Ace Laboratory um, the people that actually produce PC3000 um, they have uh, people working on ways to get around that as well, just like they've had to do on the other um, families of drives that have had the same issue. But to me, I guess the important point to address is there's really no reason for that for that lockout to exist. This is not an area of the drive that any end user or even most computer technicians will ever even know how to get into or have any need to access. It's not a readily available area of the drive. Um, and when you get into that, it's not like you're, you know, in there doing anything that wouldn't necessarily void out a warranty anyway. Um, so there's no warranty protections in place or anything like that. Uh, you can get back there and brick a drive really easily um, if you, you know, input the wrong command, even if you use um, um, the wrong, you know, if you use a capital letter whenever um, you should be using lowercase letter in some of the commands. So. But aside from that point, the bigger point is um, this is a drive that's probably recoverable right now, but it's not going to be, um, at least not by us. I'm pretty sure that they can go through and uh, send the drive to Seagate, which would be decidedly convenient if they can sell a drive that fails and then also have the technology to be able to recover the data as well that um, prevents other companies from being able to do so. Um, I believe that there are a couple of companies that may have solutions out there that they've developed on their own. This industry is pretty privatized as far as there's not a whole lot of information shared back and forth um, within the industry between companies. Um, it's just not. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where we have to work on a solution. Um, the commercial um, providers of like PC3000, you know, they're going to have to come up with a solution. Um, that allows you know us to be able to gain access to this drive on our own um, without the help of Seagate. So anyway, um, I want to show you a little bit about what it is I'm talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a one terabyte drive, some of the one I had here that was kind of close to what um, what we need. So I'm going to go through and connect it now. And I'm going to power on this drive. And now we are in PC3000. 
and this is going to be the terminal output. This is the output that I was discussing that nobody's going to have access to. Um, you have to have a serial interface and everything else, and it, it's just it's not something that the normal um, computer repair tech or definitely not the normal end user is ever going to have access to. So we have that. Refresh the ID. So we see the one terabyte drive we have connected here. Um, the area that we want to get into is actually a system file. It's system file 93. And what you'll see is, is when we hit OK, it'll search for this. It's reading. There, it's found it. What we can do now is go into um, this element here, and we can check off or uncheck um, different areas. On, let's say, for example, the drives we're working on now, the 5 terabyte drives and some of the 2 and 3 terabytes, turning off media cache, which is not relevant to this one, um, is a big, um, that's a big issue there. If you can do that, that bypasses a lot of problems that you have with drives that won't calibrate or become ready or be accessible very easily. Um, so media cache is a big, big deal. Um, generally, we'll uncheck most of these um, and then hit OK and then save it and then we can usually um, refresh the drive and have access to uh, the data at least to a point where we can go through our data extractor which is an extension of PC3000 and, uh, and be able to work with it that way. So um, since we don't have the um, ability to do that with that 5 terabyte, we're kind of stuck. And I'm going to show you what it is exactly with that 5 terabyte drive that we're seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and unhook this. And unhook the 1 terabyte drive. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up this 5 terabyte drive. Now that that's hooked up, we will go ahead and get into PC3000 again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply power to this drive. and It's not going to become ready, it's not going to become identified, um, because if I don't if I don't, um, if I just let this drive sit there and do its normal boot up, it will just freeze up, you can't access anything. So what we have to do is let it power up, and when it gets to a certain phase of the power up process, um, we'll go ahead and start hitting Control Z, which is what takes us to the actual terminal command prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and apply power, and you'll see this drive will throw up all kinds of funky um, data here in the beginning. So I'm going to wait for a second. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start hitting Control Z. It'll take it just a few seconds. You should start seeing. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Okay, so we are now uh, at the command prompt for here. We can change levels input commands, so now we're at level one, um, do whatever. So we're going to go through now and try to open up that same system file 93. And you can also notice that the drive's not making any unusual noises, not sounding weird, nothing like that. So. This set of heads in here at least seems um, to be responding a little better. Um, hit OK, and you'll notice now nothing really comes up here at all, but the more important element is when you go to here, it says Diagnostic Port Locked. So we are locked out of doing anything with that hard drive um, to modify any of those parameters in there, which would, at least in most cases, allow us to possibly and I would say probably gain access to the data. With that being locked, there's nothing that can be done. Now there are solutions that are out there for Granada family drives. Um, that is not the family that this particular one is. Um, but that allows you to be able to essentially decrypt that um, and unlock that area of the drive. But uh, that's not a possibility right now 
uh, with these five terabyte drives in this particular family. So I guess the thing that really ticks me off is the fact that here we have a drive that is potentially recoverable with the customer's critical data on here and our only option right now is to be beholden to Seagate and maybe send it out to them, um, wait on a solution to be provided, or continue working on one of our own to try to get around this issue. All three of those take a lot of time, time that the customer doesn't really need, um, or doesn't really have. I understand wholeheartedly that ultimately it's the customer's responsibility to have their data backed up. That's not an issue. I understand that. I, this is the business that we're in. We tell people that all the time. Um, my issue revolves around the fact that this is not a normal case where a drive's not recovered because of something physically damaging the platters. Let's say the platters are scored or something like that. This is an issue to where it's almost, I think malicious is too strong of a word. Um, there's something really odd though about the fact that an area of the drive that is usually used for recovering data is not accessible at this point and again I find it really odd that the company that produces the hard drive uh, also conveniently provides data recovery and I'm sure that they are able to work around this issue so you know it, it just to me it's convenient that that is the case but um, we'll continue working on these and as soon as we have a solution um, we will definitely uh, provide an update and honestly, if we have a solution to it, I'd probably just do another video showing how we were able to get around it or what's done or whatever so that even other companies, even our competitors, know how to get around this issue. Um, because really, this is for you know our customers. This is for them to get their data back. You know, And I mean, yes, it's a viable part of our business, but I don't really get a lot of these drives in. And it's not that big of a deal to me, you know, money-wise, you know, for our company. Um, this is more of the principle of it all, I think, than anything else. So, anyway, we will uh, post an update as soon as we have anything, but if you have one of these hard drives, one of these 5 terabyte Seagate hard drives, I'd highly recommend you backing it up onto at least one other device, but preferably two, so you have two backups, and it'd be really good. Um, advice probably not to even use this because if something happens you're going to be really limited on what can be done at least at this point in time. So anyway, that's my rant for the day. Appreciate you watching. Um, visit our website at acsdata.com. If you have any questions or need more information about our services, um, feel free to give us a call 1-800-717-8974. If anybody at Seagate wants to call me and complain about this video, absolutely feel free to. My name is Greg Duffield. I will be more than happy to discuss this with you in detail, in full. Send me whatever you want to about removing this because you think it might be disparaging to your company or whatever. I don't care. Um, appreciate you taking the time to watch. Again, acsdata.com. Uh, if you have any questions, post them on the uh, comments below and be happy to help you however we can. Thanks. Have a great day.